In this video, we want to talk about what might be called the two coin problem. So I have two coins here. In this case, they are the same size. And one of them starts at the top of the other one and rotates around without slippage until it gets back to the beginning where it started. Okay. So the question is, how many times does this rotating coin actually have to rotate before it gets back home? That's the question. And a similar question would be, let's imagine that I had a huge coin here and I have perhaps a small coin that only has one hundredth the radius of the large coin. Then how many times would I have to rotate this small coin around until I got back to the beginning. So, there are a couple different ways uh, of thinking about this. The first time I heard about this, I didn't come up with the correct answer. And uh, once I found out what the correct answer was, I had to think about it a while. And these are two ways of thinking about why the answer is the way it is. So let's first talk about what the answer is. So it turns out that if you have a coin here, so this is our stationary coin, let's say, and you have a coin that you're going to rotate around with. This is the one with the uh, eagle in standing position. Now if I rotate this around, if I try to be careful to avoid slippage, and I know this is hard to see with the camera here, then you see here I've already gone around one time. You can see the eagle there. And then if I keep going, it turns out that I do get back to the top after exactly two rotations. Okay. Now that might seem strange. You might think, well, the coins have the same circumference. So you would think, maybe, that you would just have to turn it around once. So let's try to understand why that would be. I've taken the liberty of cutting out a piece of yarn that is exactly, or as near to exactly as I can do with my pair of scissors, the circumference of this coin here. Of this, Turns out this is a two-year-old coin. All right, so that's the circumference. And now if I take my other coin again, the one with the eagle here, so the tails side, then if I rotate that here, then I do indeed get to the end of this string exactly after one rotation of this coin. But we just saw that if I didn't use the string, but rather the coin itself, that it took me two rotations. Now, why would that be? That's the strange thing about this problem. So here's one way to think about it. Here's one thing that will sort of get you thinking about, wow, this is probably not as simple as it seems at first. Let's say we don't have two coins of the same size. Let's say we have one coin that's this size and one coin that's just the size of a speck of dust. So basically zero circumference. If I take my, and let's say that this point is right here, here in space, okay, right here. That's the tiny, tiny baby coin that I'm going to be uh, rotating around. Now, if I do that, as exactly as I can, then it ends up, although the circumference of this baby, baby coin is zero, I still had to go around exactly once. So the answer is one higher than I would have thought. You would think maybe if the circumference is zero and you're not having to traverse any distance, that the coin would not have to make any rotations. But obviously it will. If you want to go around something, then you're going to have to do at least one rotation. Okay, so that's the first thing that might make you... Uh, 
see that, oh yeah, okay, this is not as simple as I thought it was. So now let's do this. We have our piece of string, which is basically just a linear version of the circumference of this coin, right? And so, again, if I take this eagle in standing position and rotate it like this and get to the end, then I'm basically in this position here. Now I've taken the liberty of taping two coins together exactly in this situation. So in other words, the first thing that I've done here is I've just rolled out this coin here. Just rolled it out like this, and indeed, that is exactly just one rotation. So you think, well, now we're through, right? But of course, it's not that simple. I Actually, this string is in a circle, right? So in me rotating this string around the circle, you can maybe see that this eagle is also having to turn around one more time, right? If this is just a line here, and again, this is already in the rolled out state so that it's already rotated once from the beginning, right? It started here and then I just roll it out until it's in this state here. If it were actually going around the coin, again, you can see that this eagle is only going to have to turn around one time just because it's going around the center of this other coin. So it turns out the answer is that you can do the math with the uh, radius and the diameter and the pi or however you want to do it, but whatever answer you get by dividing and multiplying and doing all that business, you have to add one to it because you also have to go around the center of the inner coin.